It's become the must-have medicine since swine flu hit the UK, but now we're told that the antiviral drug Tamiflu could be harmful to the under-12s, the very people most at risk from the virus. Studies at Oxford University have found that Tamiflu caused vomiting, dehydration and complications in some children. The researchers are now urging the government to rethink its policy of giving the drug to youngsters. The risks and benefits for under-12s add up to an unconvincing equation. They reduce the length of the flu, but not the severity of its symptoms. And crucially, there's no evidence they help to prevent complications like pneumonia. On the other hand, they cause vomiting in 1 in 20 children that could lead to serious dehydration. Dr Carl Hennigan is one of the researchers. What we get here is a symptomatic benefit of about one day reduction in the duration of illness. But what we don't get is any reduction in the complications. In addition to that, you get some harms of the treatment. And one of them harms is for about every 20 children treated, you get an additional one of them will vomit. And that can be a, a problem for children. Within the course of influenza, and in, 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 in any illness, some children will vomit. So this is an addition to the normal vomiting that occurs. But one of the things you concern yourself with children is that they can get dehydrated. This is different, different to adults where the same scenario is not a problem. But with a flu-busting vaccine still some way off, what should worried parents do now? The Department of Health's advice is that Tamiflu is safe for infants over one at a reduced dose and Relenza can be used by children over five. The researchers say children shouldn't be given the drug if they have a mild form of the illness, although they urge parents and GPs to remain vigilant for signs of complications. Around 300,000 doses of antivirals have been dispensed through the National Pandemic Flu Service. That includes children as well as adults. But this research will inevitably lead to a reassessment of whether they should be so freely handed out to children under 12 who gain so little benefit.